This is another tip for IT Pat, for those of you doing your practical assessment task. And so in this video, we're going to look at a quick way that you can include a text file and an array. Now, this video is specifically designed for that student that is maybe struggling with the Pat. You're getting to the end of your um, deadline that's getting very close and you still need a lot to do and you just want to, you just want to get the marks. You just want to try to do as much as you can to get as many marks as possible. So this is a quick way that you can include text files and arrays and hopefully get some of the marks for that. It's not ideal. Do not recommend planning it this way. You, if you want to, you can, as long as you've got other ways to get all the marks. Uh, but as I said, this is ideally for that person that is struggling to finish and needs to quickly add something that can tick those blocks for text files and arrays. And so what we're going to do is we're going to basically get stuff from a text file and put it into some sort of combo box where we can get the, the select one of the options. So that's ideally what we're going to be doing. So obviously you will need to adapt this to your particular path scenario, but there might be something where you want the user to, to select a bunch of options from a text file um, or from a combo box, for example. And so what we're going to do is we are going to load the combo box with stuff from the text file. So instead of manually, so most of the time you might click on a combo box and go into the particular items. Um, so you go to items and you could manually just type in your options that are going to be there. Maybe you want to not do that. Maybe you want to just load it from a text file. Now, I know there is a load to text file option, but we're going to do a couple of examples of showing how to do that. So if I look at my where my data files are, so I've got a text file called dog breed. And it's got a list of all the dog breeds that you could have and that I want to put in that particular combo box. Um, what's nice about using the text file option is that you can actually in the program add new ones to the text file so that the next time the program loads, it's got new breeds and stuff like that. So you can do that as well. So let's have a look. So when the form, it's ideally when the form gets activated, we're going to do that. So on the form gets activated. This is where we're going to write our code. So we're going to just do our simple text file handling. So I'll type text. So we need a text file. And I'm going to use an S line. So if you're not too sure about your text files or reading from a text file, make sure you look at our video on text file handling. Um, I'm going to assume that the, I'm not going to do the error checking for the text file, but you can do that for, it's always good to do error checking. It also takes some blocks, but I'm just going to go straight away to the assigned file and we are going to assign F to the text file which as you can see is called dogbreed.txt, dogbreed.txt, and then we're going to reset the text file, and now we're going to loop through the text file, so while not end of file, we are going to read line from f into that string variable, I'm going to do something with that string, so that s line is going to be the first line of the text file and then when the loop goes to the next value it'll be the second line and so on and then we must always remember to close our text file so there we go there's your text file algorithm without the error checking and what do we want to do with s line well we want to add it to the combo box now before i do that i'm actually going to take my combo box and make sure that there's nothing in it at the at the time so that it's cleared so i'm going to clear it at the moment it's got the, there we go it's got nothing in it and then whenever I read a value from the, the text file, I'm just going to say the combo box dot items dot add. I'm going to add whatever S line is. Now, I know some of you are saying, but, but, but as long as there is a load from text file option, yes, but you want to get the algorithm to get all the marks. So you're not going to get marks for the load from text file. So rather get the marks so you can do this method. Okay, so let's test it out. So when I run it, let's see what it does. So the program loads, and if I look at select dog breed, if I look over there, there are all the dog breeds. That's fantastic. And you can, if you want to be fancy as well, you can actually set the combo box's item index you can initialize it to zero so that the first one is selected so that it's not a blank spot at the top. So if you do that, you can see Jack Russell is selected and so you can go from there. So it's automatically selected. So that's just using a text file. Now, if you want to include an array, um, this can also be done. 
So what's nice about the array method is that I would suggest, especially if your text file is not sorted, this is a nice place where you could actually use your sort algorithm as well. So um, I'm going to create an array. You don't even need to make it global unless you're going to use it elsewhere. So we're going to create an array called breeds, which is an array from one to, let's say, 50. We don't know how many of them are going to be of type string. So we declare an array and I'm declaring an in variable, which will be the number of elements in the array. Number of elements in array breeds. Okay, so what are we going to do first is we are going to assign the text file and we actually not going to be putting that value into the combo box. So no, we're not going to do that yet. What we are going to do is we're going to first initialize n because at the moment there's nothing in the array. So initialize n to zero. There are no values in the array. Then when we read S line, we're going to say, okay, array breeds at position n. Now, no, position n is zero. So no, before we do that, we actually need to increase n. Because when we get the first item, we are at zero, we increase it to one. And at position n, which is one, we're going to put S line into the array. And then when it goes to the next value, it'll increase it to two and put it at position two. So we first increase. So remember, you first increase, not first, first, you first increase, then you add to array. That's the ideal situation. So why not, once I get here to this part, I will have an array with all the breeds. Now I could technically run my sort algorithm and always remember to write comments in your code so that um, you get marks for comments. So that, and also for the person marking, they can see what you're doing. Sort the array. It's always good to write comments. And so we can use a, a selection sort. And how many elements are in the array? Well, there are n elements. So I'm going to go till n minus 1. And if I just press enter, it'll declare r for me. And then I need another variable. Let's say j from r plus 1 to how many elements there are in the array, which in this case would be n. And J is now declared. That's fine. Oh, let's move in my little comments up. I don't want it to move our comments up. There we go. Keep it there. And what do we want to do? Well, we want to ask the question. End of for loop, for loop, J. I'm just putting it there. So we're going to say if the array breeds R is greater than array. This is your sort algorithm. Or selection sort you can go look at our video on sorts if you're not too sure of how this works if that's in the wrong order then we need to swap them so i need a temp variable is temp of type string or whatever's in the array and we need to swap the values because they're not in the correct order so then i'm going to say is temp equals to array breeds r and then array breeds r will equal to whatever array breeds j is and then array breeds j will be whatever is in s temp so there we go there's my sort and now our array is sorted and now we need to add those values to the comment box and now i will use another for loop i can use the r variable again because i'm finished using it and the sort is done and i'm just going to go from one to ever many elements in the array and say the combo box dot items dot add and what are we adding we're adding the values in the array position r so get the first value put it into the combo box get the second one and then we set it to zero so this is a quick way we can add an array and a text file so let's run it so what's nice about this method it does exactly the same thing but you'll see there's no jack rust no why because it's now sorted look all those dog names are in alphabetical order so that makes that little feature a little nice. So what you've done here is you've ticked your blocks for using an array. You've ticked your block for using a sort algorithm and used um, a text file. And so if you're going to do it this way, it would be really nice if, if someone in your program, if someone adds a breed and the breed's not in the text file, 
Um, you can search through the text file, see if it's there. If it's not there, then add it to the bottom. That way your combo box will always be up to date with uh, whichever the new breeds are. So that's a nice little quick way. It's not ideal. You should have better ways of using text files, more functional ways of using text files in arrays. But this is if you are struggling with your pets and you're struggling with time and you desperately need to include an array or a text file, this is what I suggest you do. Hopefully it can be useful. Go look at our other tips. Maybe they can help you there as well. For more videos from Mr. Long, go to our YouTube channel. Click on that subscribe button. Leave a like. Leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And if you need more videos on IT tips, go to our playlists. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.